Okay. Okay. So I will start by introduce myself. Hello, everyone. I'm Daphne Ho, currently working as a postdoc researcher at a GBIF node in Taiwan, or in short, TaiBIF. So today I will talk about TBR, the Taiwan Biodiversity Information Alliance. This is a collaborative, uh, bottom-up initiative by different groups in Taiwan that aim to integrate and mobilize Taiwan's biodiversity data. So the person who presented just before me, Jerome Ko, who is now online, uh, is actually one of the members of the TBR Secretariat. So if there's any question later, I wish uh, Jerome can be here to discuss with us because he definitely knows more than me. Okay, so for this talk, I'm excited to share with you an introduction to TBR, its development, recent achievements, and provides a brief overview of the Taiwan biodiversity data status after the integration. Same issue as anywhere else in the world and in Taiwan, most data comes from biodiversity-related projects that are mostly carried out independently, has results in dispersion of data across various databases from different organizations. So to encourage the use of biodiversity data, such as to understand biodiversity and to support the formulation of uh, national conservation policies, it is necessary to integrate and make this data fair. So there are still obstacles in the process from obtaining to integrate and using biological data. So the integration is difficult due to factors such as scattered data owners, um, different databases uses different data standards and different taxonomic backbones. To address these issues and maximize the value of existing data, we launched a collaborative bottom-up initiative that aimed to integrate local biodiversity data and to establish a national biodiversity data portal in Taiwan. Um, it's an ongoing work. Uh, the data portal is up running, but is uh, not official just yet. So on data integration, we use Darwin Core as the common language for data standard and applied the common backbone from Taiwan Catalog of Life for all databases to achieve this work. And I will talk a little bit more about this later. So these units are currently the member of the Alliance. So what makes it a member is that it has to be an official units or organizations. They have their own biodiversity databases and they sign a MOU that basically agree to participate or assist the task that TBR has to do to achieve um, TBR's vision. So right now we have uh, connections to a total of 15 databases coming from this 10 member of uh, Alliance that includes government agencies, um, a total of uh, six of them here covering the forest, ocean, national parks, freshwater environment, and conservation-related uh, agencies. Then academic and uh, also include academic and biodiversity informatics units, such as the Biodiversity Research Center, Museum or Herbarium, and the Central Center for Digital Cultures of Academia Sinica. And two of them are National Museum, uh, the National Taiwan Museum and the National Museum of Na Natural Sciences. So TBR's shared vision is to establish a biodiversity information sharing and open data network so that everyone can freely assess the national biodiversity information from this data network. And we also hope that this data will be available to support local projects such as um, environment resource management, scientific research, and uh, education-related promotion. On the other hand, we hope that this data can support and contribute to local and global conservation actions. So this is TBR's development timeline. Starting in 2017, uh, when TBR does not exist, three groups, including Thai Beef um, Biodiversity Research Institute, and Forestry and Nature Conservation Agency, Taiwan, starts to hold regular and routine meetings. So with a very draft idea of the vision from the previous slide, in the mind of uh, this really passionate colleague of mine from these three groups, 
they discuss the possibilities and potential on how to achieve a national level biodiversity data integration, and many, many meetings were held. In 2019, we invited three other government agencies with biodiversity databases, and their informatic teams started to join the meeting. And in 2020, TBR is formally established. In 2021, a press conference was held for the MOU signing uh, and of the six members, and TBR Secretariat was established. In 2022, a two new members has joined TBR, and an important milestone, we designed and developed the TBR data portal, which now contains the integrated biodiversity data coming from these uh, eight members. Just last month, we had another two new members, and we are very excited for this collaboration. Okay, okay a little bit messed up. Okay, so this is our data portal. The portal is designed for almost uh, anyone actually to, to use. Um, from the general public to researchers. There's a QR code here you can scan and take a look, but unfortunately the English version is not available just yet. Um, the data we integrated are now available in the portal uh, to search and download, and we are currently fixing some bugs and it will be officially online uh, in December. Okay, so TBR, TBR's long-term mission, which involves both the Secretariat and the Member of Alliance, is to promote open data, enhance data linkages, promote collaborations and knowledge exchange of biodiversity information skills, and to build co a collaborative platform for this network. Most importantly, we foresee the applications of this data on uh, conservation-related decision-making, especially on the national level. To fulfill some of the missions uh, mentioned on the previous slide, we had carried out various activities in the past year. Twice in a year, we organized biodiversity data mobilization and data use workshop for especially different research groups. And my team and I are very proud to say that the workshop is, an success, is a successful one where we, where we got to know all the past participants were strongly recommending all their colleagues and friends to register for our workshop. And up to a point where we have to filter and select participants because we couldn't manage a workshop that is more than 40 uh, participants. So, and twice in a year too, we organize um, ecological informatics, a one day mini symposium with the purpose to create a space for knowledge exchange. We invited experts that involved in biodiversity informatics to share their knowledge, and we had discussed topics such as species distribution modeling, uh, camera, camera trap data management, uh, long-term ecological research projects, and even mobile games using um, open biodiversity data. So, and next on May 22nd, World, the World Biodiversity Day, we organized a mini contest on our Facebook page that encouraged the public to learn about biodiversity databases and win prizes. We also have been conducting interviews with teams of government units and companies that does environment impact assessment or EIA to learn how they collect their data and their willingness uh, to open their survey data and how, they, how are they using the current open data to assist their assessment. Our final goal is to come out with uh, data templates that is suitable for the EIA team to use uh, in order to mobilize their survey data. Okay. Lastly, we have also three uh, working groups that are currently active uh, within the TBR members. The data gap working group aims to assess national level data gap. And uh, the documentation working group aims to make all documents produced by TBIA um, as fair as possible. And the natural, national history, natural history collection data standard working group aims to create a data template that is suitable for the local museums and herbarium to use and help to improve and speed up the mobilization process. So TBIA Secretariat has created a, and published a document about a five-year Taiwan 
Biodiversity Information Action Campaign, which serves as a reference guidelines. I have to speed up for the TBR network. So this action campaign contains six strategic objectives with corresponding action items under each goal. Each action item has the recommended priority, timeline, expected results, and has a note on, on what is currently known about the implementation status. So not just for TBR, any interested units or individual can use this uh, reference during the planning of their strategic direction that is related to biodiversity informatics. As mentioned earlier, data integration is difficult because they are in different formats. In order to promote the standardization of data format in all Taiwan's biodiversity databases and to efficiently uh, integrate this data, TBR has produced a Taiwan biodiversity data standard document that adopts the Darwin Core standard to promote data exchange and, and uh, standard setting of the data among the alliance members. This has efficiently integrated biological survey data that scattered among uh, government agency, academic research institution, um, and the private groups. Okay. So this document, Principles of Opening and Sharing Sensitive Biodiversity Data, is produced as a consensus and standardized uh, methodolo methodological framework or guide for data management by various data providing units and at the same time provide appropriate protection for species that may be harmed by opening of uh, detailed spatial data. We hope this document can help to maximize the openness of uh, biodiversity data to support research and especially in uh, decision, decision, uh, conservation related decision making. Our data integration effort has resulted in a cumulative count of uh, 19 million records, including more than 1 million specimen records, which with the two new members who had just joined us last month, we expect to see a growth of records exceeding, exceeding 20 million in the near future. And 7 million, 7 million from the record is not published to GB yet, and we plan to do that soon. Since the data integration is only recent, we did a quick check on the data statistic on the TBR data portal. TBR integrates all digitized data from the member of Alliance, and this includes two data that they collected outside of Taiwan. Of all records, only 5% or about 900,000 of these records has a geospatial error. Upon removal of these data points with issues, we can see that the remaining 16.7 million records are located in Taiwan, and 12% of them are, out, are outside of Taiwan. Our next work is to assess a national data gap. So TBR portal has diverse data types owing to the, owing to the distinctive profession and strength of each databases. Since we have quite a few data sets or data providers, under the Alliance that works on collections and specimen data, we were interested to know what are the differences spatially and taxonomically. So let's look at the pies. Um, on relative count of records by taxa, we see huge difference in terms of proportion uh, comparing the specimen, the one on the left, and non-specimen record uh, on the right. Now let's look at the Taiwan map. So this is a five times five kilometer grid White color grid means no data, and blue means higher relative number of records. The red color zone on the non-specimen record map on the right is the high mountain area in Taiwan. So now we can see a trend that even though specimen data is sparse or sometimes no data, the distribution of records is more even compared to non-specimen records, which has been lacking on the high mountain areas. Specimen data on, uh, this is uh, a bar graph for specimen data on the left and non-specimen on the right. So in terms of taxonomical distribution on the data, we see plants and insects classes have the highest proportion uh, from the specimen records. In non-specimen records, 74% of this comes from bird and most of them comes from eBird. 
Okay. So from here, we realize the potential of uh, specimen records to fill certain uh, taxonomical and spatial gap in Taiwan biodiversity data. And we look, we look forward to mobilize more collections data in the future. So yeah, because of time, uh, maybe I'll skip this. And I lastly, I would like to thank everyone who is sitting in this room and online. And um, I also like to, uh, sorry, I would also like to um, acknowledge our funding agency. Thank you. Any questions for me <laughs> and Jerome? <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned, uh, well, thanks, thanks for your well, good talk. And uh, you mentioned about uh, well, in, the, in the future, you have a plan to include uh, many small museums, like local museums and uh, some uh, local uh, academies, academic institutions. But uh, in case of local museums, maybe the support would be needed because they have no resource or no, no human resources well, in, in, in that such small uh museums so do you have any supporting plan um so far because we are still quite um at the beginning stage of uh mm -hmm. at, at the moment mm -hmm. um we plan to uh first uh invite the members that have a bigger databases rather mm -hmm. than the local one but uh, we but we do plan to invite and uh collaborate with uh, smaller groups with yeah. uh, mm. specimen data in the future. Yep. I see. Mm. I think that to citizen science, well, the smaller museums are very important to spread many things to the ordinary society. Yes. So, mm. uh, uh, we have a common problem in Japan, so mm. let's talk with you. Okay. Um, in to... our Thai beef workshops, uh, we see a trend of um, local citizen science projects they are interested to open their data now. So we have participants from various citizen science projects and they already start to publish their data to GBIF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's looking good at the moment. Thank you. So we have a question online. Uh, Mari is asking, where can I find more information about the work of Naturalistic Collections Group? Jerome, can, can Jerome answer this question? He, he actually has more contact to the museum people than me. <laughs> or maybe uh, Jerome, or you Jerome can, can post it on the Slack channel. Or we can Marie discuss can read it. on the Slack. He says sure. So you can go ahead and start the next one. Okay. Our next speaker, which is the last presentation 